this is where it all began. One of the original sketches that turned out to be the PT-6. We're sitting in front of uh, perhaps one of your particularly favorite engines that they yes, have on display. Yes, it's uh, our baby. Our baby. The PT-6. Uh, we discovered that in the power range of about 400 to up to 2,000, there was a gap where there weren't too many engines available, good turbine engines. And so we looked around and uh, we looked at home and the Beaver airplane had a piston engine. We thought that needs a good turbine engine of about four or five hundred horsepower. Why don't we do an engine that'll go in there? And so that's what we decided to do. It turned out to be an ideal sort of engine for the market that we were trying to penetrate. It had a wide application. It was suitable for vehicular, marine, auxiliary power, prime power for helicopters, fixed wing airplane. Couldn't go wrong. We said, let's do it. I think the driving force was to achieve something in the uh, aviation business that uh, people would sit up and, uh, and take notice of. We would build a better mousetrap is what we would do. We would show them how to do it. I want to talk a bit about um, its fundamental architecture. Uh, the, the center mounts, they enable a fast removal of, of the power section at the C-flange, uh, which in a sense, it enables hot section inspections to be performed on wing. Absolutely. The fact you could break the engine in two and get at it, da 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 bolt it up. You put it on the wing, you wanted to look at it, you think you took the power section off with the propeller and the gearbox and everything, and you were right at the engine, right? In order to inspect it from outside, if you look at this engine over here, you'll notice that the, the, the fuel manifold is on the outside of the engine. So if you wanted to look inside, you just uncoupled that, put a boroscope in there and looked around to see what was happening. And look at it, how accessible it is. It just sits right outside the engine. We could have had a fixed shaft engine altogether, which, which was on the market. Again, that had features which were not uh, as appealing because a fixed turbine has a very limited speed range. It can only go up about 100%. And its handling was compromised by the fact it had a fixed shaft engine with a compressor. Now, with a free turbine, you can separate your, your gas generator portion of the engine from the output power section of the engine. And you can uh, handle that gas generator part and slam it around, and it doesn't care. The power turbine's driving the gadget, and you can vary its speed to shoot whatever you're driving. And there's no mechanical interface, just the gas flowing through the engine. So its flexibility was fantastic. You made sure it was a good, reliable Pratt & Whitney engine. Perhaps we could talk a bit about the idea of this reverse flow nature of the PT-6. The reverse flow, at first glance, appeared to be a negative. In the actual application of the engine, it proved to be immensely positive, in as much as it produced a much quieter engine, and you were able, by dint of a bypass duct which fed air to the engine, to protect the engine from foreign object damage, like birds, rocks, hailstones, whatever. We were able to develop a system which bypassed all the rubbish and just let air go into the engine, which is what the engine needed. Can you take us back to the first PT-6 test flight? Test flight? Uneventful. We bolted the engine to the nose of a Beach 18. We put a Hamilton Standard propeller on the nose. We said, start her up, Charlie. The airplane took off, no problem. No problem. It ran. Because we've got a lot of hours in the test stand. It was, it was a rougher passage to test an engine in one of our test cells than it was to fly it in an airplane. I'll tell you why. Our test cells were of a rectangular cross-section. When you run a propeller in a rectangular cross-section, you create corner vortices. The propeller catches these vortices and shakes the engine like a terrier is shaking a bone. And so you bust the engine up in the test cell. 
if you could get an engine to work in a Tesla, it was duck soup to put it in an airplane. So I said, what we'll do, we'll put two engines in a Beechcraft. You can have them for a dollar. You put it in the airplane, demonstrate to the Army how good an airplane it is, which is what Beach agreed to. The Army loved it. They loved it. They said, hey, send some more boys. And so that became the N NU-8F, a Queen Air. Then the civil version became the King Air. And, and once all the other airplanes saw this engine with turbine engine, they said, oh, this airplane with a turbine engine, they said, great, we want some of that. So it just built up from there. Does that make you particularly proud, knowing that the PT-6 continues to be a cornerstone in the aviation industry? Of course it does. Of course it does. We knew it would happen. We knew it was good because we beat the hell out of it to make it good. Reliability is number one in this game. People hate the engine quitting when they're flying over a lake, you know. Jesus, now what? You know, but the PD-6 just kept going. It had to be a winner. We're on our way to uh, take a look at a stalwart in the PT-6 engine family, the twin pack. Yes, the twin pack uh, was ideal for a helicopter. It, it, it allowed use of a lightweight power plant with, with two engines, as opposed to two separate engines. This was the whole idea of the, of the twin pack concept. You had a lightweight power plant which had the benefits of a twin engine installation. You could lose one engine and still keep flying with the other engine. And it was lightweight and lower cost than having two separate engines. That's why the idea was conceived. Since then, if I'm not mistaken, there have been other variants of the PT-6 that have made their own inroads into the, uh, the helicopter market. You have the PT-6B, you have more recently the PT-6C family came out with the 67E variant. The direct drive, yeah. 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 The plan uh, and on, on day one was to make the engine applicable to anyone who needed power. We pushed engines out that would go 6,000 hours without looking at it, you know? That's a long time. Imagine your car going 6,000 hours and you die before that happened, you know? Yes. That's a good, absolutely. reliable, good-looking engine. It's got an eagle on it. It sells itself, you know?